we doing? Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Omega Life 21 Live. I'm your host for Omega Life 21 Live, James P. Madonna, um, and I am here with a very special guest, of course, our longtime friend and our personal voiceover artist and former um, NFL uh, quarterback. On Taxi Reserves, yes. Taxi Reserves. Not the show Taxi, but, you know, uh, William H. Morrow III. Thank you very much for being Jimmy, thanks for having me. with us at uh, uh, Mega Life everyone, 21 Live. Everyone. Thank you. Now, you hear this man's voice. He just said a few words. All he has to do is speak, and that is an automatic audition, to be honest with you. But, uh, William, tell the folks, uh, because we are live and being recorded, uh, worldwide. Uh, tell the folks uh, a little bit about your background in terms of uh, your athleticism. Well, I was a, not to top my own horn, I was an excellent quarterback, but I experienced an awful lot of uh, <clears throat> politics in football. For example, when I moved up to Ridgewood from Texas, I wanted to sign up for football. Uh, they said, what position? I said, quarterback. Uh, the coach said, I've already got my quarterback. I said, you've never seen me throw. He said, it doesn't matter. Well, how do you beat that? So I experienced that throughout that. Uh, I have run into so, so many other players that went through the same thing on the pro level, college level, a whole bit. The politics were horrendous. Uh, but I still had great experiences. I, I've made great friends, not on just teams I've played on, but on teams i played against. But the politics were bad. It really was bad. It seems like there's office politics and unfairness in, uh, in every industry. Um, well, when a guy doesn't even see where your talent is, and he says it doesn't matter, how do you fight that? This man throws, like, he has a bionic arm. A lot of people, a lot of receivers did not look forward to catching this man's passes. No, they used to duck. They would duck and, he, and scream, he, no, wave their hands, no, no, no. And I'm like, what, what? And they said, don't throw it. I call him the sternum breaker, William Morrow. I, uh, I threw a football. I was clocked to the high 80s, low 90s. The NFL said I was beyond the NFL in a league on my own. Yet I had to sit on the taxi squad, reserve to them. The team I was with said they could bring me up. Well, let me tell you, it's very frustrating. So... This is what happens. It's, it's a shame. A, it's a bad experience. Life is not fair, and not everyone right. that is has the very best talent well, the best, as succeeds. You said, the best don't always play. Uh, the best don't always succeed. It's like people equate wealth. You're a genius. You're brilliant. That's not true. You could have screwed your way to the top. Well, let's be true. And I'm not saying this to put any people mm -hmm. down. Say you're a mentally challenged or handicapped individual. Say you have Down syndrome. You inherit unknowingly $100 billion. What are they going to say? Right. He's a genius. And you hire He's somebody to start a business. He's a genius. You hire somebody you know, to manage your company. You've got to be fair and honest here. Don't equate certain things. Yeah, but a lot of people get ahead through ill-gotten gains and underhanded tactics, too. That happens also. Yeah, too. and it seems like the nice people sometimes do finish last. I mean... Yeah. Growing up, we have not hurt people. I've always been good to people, so have you. And it seems like we're always getting shafted. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, what's the secret formula here? I don't think there is one. I'm just saying that to be facetious. No, sometimes you just have to luck out and be at the right place it at the right time. It takes time. Look at me with my voiceovers getting a new agent. I just can't send my demo to anyone. I've got to be recommended. So, in the, in the, the now world, I'm hogtied right now. Until I get yeah. recommended. Right. My hands are held behind my back. I can't do anything. Right. Especially when the established agencies tell you don't call, don't send right. your eight by ten photos, don't come in person and visit, don't contact us. So how do you What's left? What's left? How do you how do you get evaluated? How well, how do you break into I, the business? I would like to know why you're are you in even in the business of being an agent if you do don't want to look at New talent. That's how they make their money, through talent. You do. And if you don't want anything, why are you in that business? Right. 
Because so, you, you, you stand to make more money as an agency by by accumulating more clients, more talent, what, and, t and TR stable. What next, quote, diamond into the rough, jam or jewel, what have you, are you passing on? The Beatles, most companies wouldn't sign them. The Stones, most companies wouldn't sign them. I mean, history is filled with this. People seem to be afraid to sign anyone for some reason. So really, what are these agents really worth? It's odd. They don't want to look at, see, hear anyone. It's 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 a very strange business. Oh, without a doubt, it's uh, it's not often not fair. Uh, yeah, I see it in professional wrestling all the time. There's yeah. lots of dirty politics. Be yeah, backstabbing. Yeah, and uh, like Barbara Bono said during the election against Chris Christie, there's a lot of a lot of backdoor politics going on behind the scenes that uh, do not have the people's best interests. But aside from that, you went to, how many colleges did you go to and which ones? Well, I started at Tennessee. Then I transferred to Wagner College on Staten Island. Right. And uh, then, uh, some hard experiences in college when I, I played. I was very good. Not bragging. I'm sorry if it sounds like I'm being braggish. But when you're so good and the coach gets in your face, and says, you're too good, boy. I'm going to run you till you drop. I was a 17-year-old little freshman. You know, I, I tried to do my best. <coughs> and then I'm being yelled at for being too good, for making the defense look bad. Well, I, being, I, being, be, be excelling in your craft. That's what I'm supposed to do. It's, it's my what job. you're supposed to do. It's your job to do to strive to do better and better and better. And I, yourself. In a game, I was coming out of the backfield. Uh, I was supposed to drag out of the backfield and up. Linebacker committed so early. It was so easy. This was great. So I cut up field faster. Right. Quarterback said, oh, my God, I just lobbed it, touchdown. I got my you-know-what shoot out. Quarter, the coach said, what the hell were you doing? I'd rather give up a six. You run it according to the playbook. I said, coach, football's a series of adjustments. I don't care about adjustments. I said, Okay, okay. So no matter what I did, it was wrong. You'd rather not get the touchdown. But when a guy commits, and even the quarterback, when we got the side, he said, great read. I thought, you saw him. He said, he cut so easily. You, you, you had to cut a field. You just had to. Yeah. I got yelled at for that. My roommate and teammate in college suffered a heart attack during practice. I... Uh, well, the doctor said one more to Jimmy. His name was Jimmy. One more practice, you're a dead man. They found out later he had rheumatic fever as a child. Okay. So uh, during the training lunch, as you know, in a college cafeteria, there's, you know, rows of tables. We were at the football training tables eating. So it's a packed cafeteria. Jimmy tells the coaches he has to quit football. Doctors orders, blah, blah, blah. And they chewed him. I will never forget this. They yelled at him, you're a coward, you're effing this, pack your effing bags, get out of my effing sight. And I remember, again, I was a 17-year-old freshman. That night, my father got a call at home, up in New Jersey. I was in Tennessee. And all he heard was me yelling, get me out of here. I said, I, I said this is not football to me. I don't need this. I said, uh, they don't care about us. They do not care about us one bit. You're a coward because you had a heart attack. This poor kid gave it his all and had a heart attack, and you call him a coward. I, that's been, that was 1970. I think 70. I cannot outlets. get over that. Yeah. I never will get over that. Unbelievable. Uh, it's just not right. Yeah, they even treat uh, pro wrestlers much worse than that. A lot, uh, a lot of times, they get stiff for their for their pay. They have no health insurance. They have to, they have to pay for their own transportation. It's well, unheard of. It's unheard of it it, is. It, 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 it is. in this country. For any industry to be like that, you know. And, and then, you know, you go in the earlier past, not so recent past, really. The, the way the, the blacks were treated in major, major League Baseball. You mean before Jackie Robinson? Well, before and during. In a way, it was great. It's one of the greatest segments in all of sports history, in American history. There will never be anything again like the Negro Leagues. That was baseball. Let me tell you something about the Negro Leagues. Um, uh, Satchel Paige, Cool Papa Bell, and Josh Gibson yep. personally um, 
approach the owner of, at that time, the owner of the Pittsburgh Pirates and asked him, could you please hire us? We'll even work for less money than the hmm. white the white players. And he refused them. Well, and the only reason they chose Jackie Turned Robinson. Turned them down. The only reason they chose Jackie Robinson, and I'm not nice saying this to take anything away from him. He's a great player. Yeah. But he wasn't the best player. Josh He's, Gibson. He spoke well for a black man of that time, as they say. He was a college-educated black man, which the public could possibly accept a little easier. He went to USC. So, you know, it's so much. Well, I mean, they, they said that no one could hit Satchel Page, and they also said that Josh Gibson could have very, very well passed up Babe Ruth. No, no, they estimate. They say uh, well, the records weren't that great, but they estimate Josh Gibson hit at least... 962 home runs. And don't yeah, say, that's what I meant. And don't say, it's the Negro Leagues. Well, yeah, the superior Negro Leagues, they beat the white teams far, far many more times than the whites beat them, and they held their all-star games at Comiskey Park in Chicago, and they averaged 46,000 plus. So these aren't slouches. No. These were phenomenal beyond the white player players. These guys were incredible what they could do. Absolutely. And what was done to them is just an injustice. They would play sometimes three, four games a day. Corporate teams, professional teams, high college teams. They would accept any and all challenges. Could you imagine you know? how how uh, breaking the uh, the race, is ending the racism in sports and the color barrier, could you imagine what a contribution to Major League Baseball that that would have that would have uh, uh, oh, it might have changed the game. Changed the game, manifest itself, you know, by, yeah. by by the owner of the Pittsburgh Pirates saying, "You know what? Screw these racists. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. hire. I want you. I want you, Josh Gibson. I want you, and God. Satchel was... Page, and and Papa Bell. But then again, why did they only go to him? And why didn't other white owners still said, I'll, I don't take, know. "I'll take you. I'll take you." I don't know. I don't know. Well, me and um, William H. Moore of the third which I'm very happy to have him on Thank my you, show. Thank For you. the first time on live stream, William H. Morrill III, voiceover artist, his very first time on live stream and Mega Life 21 Live. We were talking, before he gives you some demonstrations of his voiceover talents, uh, we were discussing advertisement for products that happen to be exceptional. And... There are certain products that are exceptional that have been around for decades that people just don't know about well, it because they... Case, over a century. Right, over a century. People don't know about it because the company chose not to promote themselves uh, in a way that other more popular companies have and they just chose not to spend the money on advertisement. Perfect example. Here's a product, Authentic Texas Recipe. Uh, since, excuse me, while I put my glasses on. Oh, I forget, he has eagle eyes. I got eagle eyes, okay. So we call it Wolf Brand Chili, authentic Texas recipe. Since 1895, with beans. Uh, what happened to the, tr uh, oh, oh, we didn't bring the clipboard in? Yeah. Oh, oh, okay, anyway. Uh, yeah, hold it up to the camera. Anyway, the stuff is grand, we love it. And we're wondering why they don't have a bigger or more massive advertising campaign than does a Hormel or other competitor. And they and blow away, in my opinion, they blow away all the other supermarket, all the other canned chilies. But I never heard about it until this past week. I, I, I found it in a, in a store called the Dollar Tree. And here, Wolf Brand Chili, authentic Texas recipe with meat and beans, the company founded uh, 1895. 1895. Okay, I had no idea this company existed. Wolf Brand Chili. They've advertised recently uh, for the past year, give or take. Every grocery chain I've been to, nobody has it. And it is great. So do your marketing, Wolf Brand. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I love it. I love it. I, I've been, I mean, I make... It's excellent stuff. I make outstanding homemade chili in my pressure cooker, but if I if I wanted it an easy hey, lunch, let me interrupt chili. you real quick. Trust us, 
Wolfbrand has no idea what we're talking about. This This is all on our own. This we is, love it that much. Yeah, this is so all on this our is own. All, we're is, not getting paid. No. Uh, it's just I've looked for it so hard. I've been to four or five different grocery big chains. Nobody has it. They haven't heard of it. I said, my God, I can't get this stuff anywhere. Yeah. Then Jimmy said he saw it at one of his dollar stores. Yeah. And I said, you've got to be kidding me. And he's been looking for it for a long time. Oh, about a year, give or take. And, and of yeah. course, if you tell the store manager in supermarkets how great it is, they're so independent that they, they, they usually do not order it. No, for one customer. I'm the only guy that ever asked for it or something. Blah, 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 but, blah. but it's really yeah. an outstanding chili. This is not a paid advertisement. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, we're going to take a um, be quick, you know what break, and we'll be back. We're going to take a little break, and we'll be back with William H. Morrow the third. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Sorry, Jim, but they. Okay, we are back with part two of William H. Morrow the third. Uh, our very special, long-time voiceover artists, and um, we're back from break. Uh, now, William Morrow is going to do some readings, and but, but before you do readings, do you have any advice for aspiring uh, young voiceover artists that want to learn the basics? Are there, are there any... Any tips that they can that you can give them? Well, hone your craft. Uh, the hardest part, as I said earlier, is getting an agent. Work on your voice. What is your voice? Uh, a friend of ours is very good with cartoon voices. Yes. Practice those. Do them. Continue continuously. Uh, do different reads. Do the same read or commercial copy, what have you, different ways. You want to show different inflections, different ways of reading. As one guy might read a commercial, another guy or girl may read it differently too. Mm -hmm. So keep honing your craft. Practice your, your diction, your inflection, sometimes different dialects, uh, cartoon voices if you have them. Uh, what do you like in voiceovers? Do you like doing movie trailers? Do you like doing radio log lines, commercials, cartoon voices? Industrial narration, books to audio, it can go on and on. Possibly, you could do them all. But hone your craft, keep practicing, always clear your voice when you go into a studio, wherever. You know, uh, try to learn about cleaning your nose out beforehand, too. It'll be, you want all your passages well, you know, clear. And I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but... That's all right. uh, uh, but um, Enrico Caruso, the famous uh, singer, uh, he used to uh, drink uh, cold water with, with a little apple cider vinegar in it to help clear his throat. And now I, I vouch for that. That really yeah, helps. Yeah. The little tricks. Some of them, you have a squirt formula you put up your nose. It's called a nasal douche. Clean out the sinuses. You want everything clear. Uh, you don't want to be, there's enough, dude, there's enough two-legged, naturally born douches. Well, it's very critical. <laughs> you want to sound your very, very yes. best when you do a read. These people are paying you yeah. large amounts of money yeah. to sell their product. So you want to be the best. Yeah. We're talk you're talking about like uh, the, the saline solution spray that they sell specifically for uh, cleansing the nasal passage. Well, saline, and I found one of the best things to do costs you absolutely nothing. Growl a little bit, clear your throat. Obviously, blow your nose, but it's like just before you do a read, you go, <clears throat> <clears throat> and you can you go to your engineer. You're ready. But what you're about clear. what about like a Hall's menthol with this? Uh, it can't hurt. You know, it'll open, it'll open up your passages. Well, that too, or maybe an inhaler of some sort too. Mm -hmm. But the main thing is growl, get that throat clear, ready, and all right. little microscopic bubbles yeah. or what have you. And do a little, do a little practicing before you go on your audition or your job. Oh, uh, not to interrupt. Always when you're given a copy, proofread it before you even do take one, because most of these copywriters don't know how to punctuate well. And typos. Uh, typo. a, a lot of typo. The main thing is punctuation. 
you're like, shouldn't there be a pause here? How do you want this read? It all flows into one. Oh, no, no, put a pause there, please. Pause, you want it with, you mean a comma or a three dots for a longer pause, a dash? You know, how do you want this read? Can we do a sample read? You know, remember, these people aren't here to hurt you. They want the best product, too, because their clients pay big money for this product. So ask questions, read your copy, edit your copy, clear your throat, go through some sample reads, say, okay, I think I'm ready, let's do it. And you're going to screw up. That's called a blooper, folks, just like you see on the TV shows. The best do It's a blooper. Everybody makes mistakes. No one is perfect. Except me. Well, no, I'm teasing. But I well, know. his nickname is Man God. That's right. Man God Moral. That's right. But no, everybody makes mistakes. You do get tongue-tied. And uh, happens to the best. It's the best way to put it. Yeah. And don't true. get upset and nervous. Oh, God, I'm sorry. All right, but, hey, take it right back. Let's go again. Do it again. So I've had some great engineers in the past. So it was. it's fun. Mm -hmm. Lucrative, fun. And it's nice when you can hear yourself on a commercial or a movie trailer, what have you. Because, as we say, in a world, payback, this time, it's for real. Today is R&B and classic soul. 107.5 WBLS. But it's, it's fun like that. Yeah. You're getting paid to, to, to use your talent. Uh, well, if you love your job, you'll never work a day in your life. Well, like you, right, you, you don't go to work, you go to play. Uh, it's, I just had a brain freeze, it just went blank. That happens. Yeah, it does. But no, it's, it's just fun when, when you enjoy what you do. It really is. Uh, you meet great people along the way. Uh, you get paid very well. And it's nice to hear yourself on some things. Well, well, you, you, you are can be your embarrassing. own, you, you are, you can be your own best critic. Um, you are your own worst critic. Or you could be a oh, worst critic. Because you, you see yourself worse than others. I'm not saying this to brag. Everyone loves my voice wherever I go. When I hear myself, I can't stand it. I don't like it. Uh, I think I sound awful. You know, many actresses and actress, well, actresses and themselves. actors do not watch their own That's movies. That's right. They do not watch their own movies. When I was in broadcasting school, when they did my playbacks, I would not stay in the room with the class. I'd be in the hallway. I said, please call me when it's over. I, I said, I can't. I can't. <laughs> the number one rule we were taught is no one likes their own voice. So they don't get upset. It's not the end all. It's natural. You won't like the way you sound. Well, you might. Some people are so overly yeah. egotistical, they might just say, God, I sound wonderful. I'm the best. Or you might like the way you look. Uh, that, and you really don't look that good. The guy guarantees it. That guy with the, was it Men's Club? He went out of business, right? No, no. They fired him, sadly. Men's I thought he was very good. I thought he was the owner. Men's Club. Uh, uh, no, CEO and founder, I believe he was. Men's Warehouse. Men's Warehouse. There you go. Uh, you like the way you, you had a gravelly you know. voice. You like the way you look. You're gonna, I you're gonna love the way you work. I yes. guarantee it. You're gonna love the way he you was work. very good. He was excellent. Uh, yeah. I don't know what happened there. Yeah. I like the the other guy with the gray beard, the Mr. Dos Equis. Uh, you know, stay thirsty, my friends. I don't always drink beer when I, but when I do, it's Dos Equis. That's right. Stay thirsty, my friends. And I'm high as a kite right now, but he, he, I'm enjoying myself. He claims to be. He now. claims to be the most interesting man, man alive. in the world. Even his pinatas fight back. The, the, the most interesting <laughs> man alive. But you, you're it's looking good. at the true oh, most interesting my. man alive. I want to meet this man one day. We're going to have a go-to. Talk to each other. What would it be? It's like Godzilla versus uh, Mothra or something. Rodan or something. Yeah, one of those. I mean, you know, hey, you're the most interesting? What a might, Lint. You know, it'd be fun. Actually, Godzilla versus King Kong. Well, it was it was a it was a Japanese King Kong. It wasn't you know. It looked what? like it was a red. It looked like an orangutan. You know, it had red hair. That's right. I met an orangutan once anyway. By the way, so. Well, orangutans. Uh, uh, after you've, after an evening of drinking, of imbibing, orangutans uh, suddenly become more attractive by by 
at closing time, right? Is that is that that's the old country western song? Uh, no, not that I know of. Yeah, the girls get better looking at closing time because you're 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 drunk. No. And the lights are dim. Yeah, it's, it's a country western song. It think. is. An old one. Very uh, old. And then there's another uh, one called um, "I Like My Women a Little Bit on the Trashy Side." That's another country western song. Well, the other one I like too is "I've Got Friends in Low Places." <laughs> so I love that one. You know, so that's great. Yeah. Okay. William is going to, uh, Sir William is going to lay some uh, demo voiceovers on you. Just a few. I won't bore you to death. Give you a few sample reads for all you aspiring artists for the entire bit. You won't bore them. I hope I don't. Let's see what I have here. What's good? Federal Express. When it absolutely, positively has to be there overnight. The few, the proud, the Marines. Saturday, only on bio. We put the good in your morning. If you do with other hamburger chain whatevers, simply have it your way. American Airlines. We'll take you places. This film has not yet been rated. Oh, we have so many here. Oh, I could teach classes. I think I could here. This is wonderful. Old school. And today's R&B. 98.7. Kiss FM. Hey, Kiss FM. Oh, these are good things. Do you have enough light? Yeah, I'm just finding... I'm reading over all these, like... Our cuts are a cut above. Poe Farron's Steakhouse. Dry us. I love all this stuff. I mean, when you read these old commercials, like, oh, they're wonderful. Smooth jazz. CD 101.9. Cool. Like me. Easy listening. Light FM. 106.7. WLTW. This is some samples of how you can do reads. You can do your rock. 104.3 WQXR, where rock still lives. What a voice. CBS FM. Gotta have a past. We'll keep it alive. CBS again. Some things never grow old. These are great. I love the old, the, uh, where memories live on. 101.1. WCBS FM. This is such good copy. Mm -hmm. And these are such quick, but good lessons for those of you wanting to get into voiceovers. Different reads, different styles, like <clears throat> this is CNN. Or this is CNN breaking news. The following is a BBC special presentation. Oh, look at all this. It's wonderful. Simple things. WNBC-TV, New York. WSBK-TV, Boston. And I love all this. If you can't take the heat, get off the test track. Check out the entire, two th blah. Check out the entire 2013 line of Mercedes-Benz at your tri-state Mercedes-Benz dealers. This is good. Oh, yeah. Good copy. Good copy. Excellent. Yeah, that was a sampling. And now, and that was a sampling. Um, I, um, okay, well, that was great. There was more. I didn't want to bore everybody to pieces. And, uh, you know, I, I should have cleared my throat a few times yeah. more there, but different reads, different styles. Well, your, your beverage I, is clearing your throat. I hope it was okay. I hope it was all right. Did it sound right to you? Excellent. Okay. Outstanding. Um, because a new wind was about to blow. This time, we mean business. See, all oh, this all this goodness. man has to do is speak to an agent over the phone, and the first sentence that he utters is is technically an audition for William. And if you don't Morrow. remember, coming Friday, if you don't go to the movie theater, we know where you live, because this time, it's for real. <laughs> it's fun to have fun. Oh, I'm only yeah. kidding with you. Don't get upset. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Okay. We're, uh, so this concludes part two.
of um, our special guest, uh, commercial uh, voiceover artist. Oh, let me say one more thing. Right. Don't fear. Yeah. Reje don't fear rejection. Everyone gets rejected. Every actress, every actor, every screenwriter. Everyone gets turned down. It's part of the business. Even Arnold Schwarzenegger yes. got turned down by, I think, uh, uh, William yes. Morris. Yeah, that's who I had as my previous agent. They, they told him, you have a funny name, you have a funny accent, don't even bother, don't waste your time, you'll never make it. The scary thing will be is if everything goes too easily, you say, something's wrong here. Nobody's turning me down. So when you get rejected and turned down, you're, you are in phenomenal companionship. You, you have a great group around you. Hey, didn't, the greatest. Didn't some famous actors uh, 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 that first went to LA to uh, to get discovered, like like live out of their car, sleep in their car? A lot. A lot. Before they were discovered. Sadly, Sly Stallone was basically laughed out of the uh, University of Miami drama school. They said, you know, because of his lisp or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so really, how do I put it? Who knows anything, okay? And some of them are very short. Yeah, yeah. Some, and, oh, uh, a lot of your actors. Tom Cruise, Al Pacino, They're right? very small. Robert De Niro. Uh, not... uh, uh, Dustin Hoffman. Dustin Hoffman. Don't, number one rule, don't listen to the naysayers. There are too many negatives out there. You know what you've got. Use it, you go for it, and do it. All right? And I do wish you the very, very best. And always practice and always keep keep, always train. Yes, always keep training. Keep training. Dry even, reads the whole day. Yeah, even if, if you allocate 30 minutes a day or 20 minutes a day, believe me, little things do add up. Mm -hmm. And Well, even what I do when I meet you for coffee, yeah, uh, just walking into McDonald's for my car as I walk in the room. Today's R&B and classic soul. That's what? Not even 10 seconds. Practice as you go. Keep it fresh, yeah. Always keep your mind going. All right? You'll be fine. And, and you know, training doesn't have to be state-of-the-art or complex. No. Yeah, the no. great, the great uh, legendary baseball player of the past, Stan Musial, you know how he used to practice, I hear? He, he had somebody pitch golf balls to him which are much smaller than a baseball. It doesn't have to be high-tech. It doesn't have to be state-of-the-art. It can be uh, simple. In many ways, Jimmy and I have said this in times past, things we've experienced and done and gone through. In many ways, the old ways are best. Not everything has to be high-tech. Remember that. Okay? Yeah, perfect example. The, uh, the stainless steel uh, um, safety razor where you, you put the single blade like Wilkinson sword mm -hmm. in. It, blow, it still blows away. In many ways, the old ways are. Any multi bladed. Yes, yes. You know, I don't care if there's a, a 12 blades on it. This, the old way, the old way is the best. And I've tried them all. And, and you know, and like, <clears throat> but, but, you know, this is why it's important to, uh, if you have a product that's time proven and high quality, let the people know. Let them know about it. You got to market you it. You must have a marketing to Department. You have no idea. Make have, them earn their money. People Come on, have everybody. no people had no idea that White Castle makes great right. Let me excuse me. White Castle makes great fried clams, sweet potato French fries, whole pork sandwiches, barbecued, uh, the, probably the tastiest milkshakes in fast food, um, and uh, codfish nuggets. But people, who knows? people had no idea until I told them. I never knew until Jimmy told me. I said. How did you find out about this? I never knew. I find out by accident. What did I say? The best ad is tell them, show them in slang. Show them what you got. Nobody knows. Let them know. It's called marketing. Yeah. Please. They have no idea. Until you have you, to let people know. Until you tell them. You really do. Yeah. Uh, now, we're going to try later. We're going to attempt something, but it's not guaranteed. We might be back, but then again, we might not be. Right. But anyway, as far as uh, this show goes, thank you. But we will be back in the future. It may not be yes. tonight. All right? But now, we will talk some more. Because, William, this is your very first time streaming worldwide live <clears throat> on live stream.
This is your very first well, show. I hope you somebody did, hears me. We'll see what happens. You did great. I'm proud of you. And you and keep trying as well. You never quit. Never listen to naysayers. Best of luck to you. All right. All right.